My name is Dr. Suzanne Goh. I'm a pediatric neurologist and a researcher in the field of mitochondrial dysfunction and autism. I've served as co-director of the Columbia University Developmental Neuropsychiatry Clinic for Autism and as associate research scientist and assistant professor of clinical neurology in the Department of Psychiatry at Columbia University. For many years, I've been researching mitochondrial function in autism using a variety of techniques, including brain imaging and genetic approaches. I've also been diagnosing and treating mitochondrial dysfunction in children with autism in my own clinical practice. One of the biggest problems I've found in the field of autism is that certain highly effective treatment strategies developed at leading university medical centers haven't been made more widely accessible. In particular, many practitioners aren't aware that nutritional supplements to improve and sometimes reverse the symptoms of autism are being used by expert physicians at world-class institutions. Johns Hopkins University has been a leader in this practice. Dr. Richard Kelly is the director of the Division of Metabolism in the Department of Pediatrics at Johns Hopkins. He's published this practice guideline to educate physicians in the use of vitamins and nutritional supplements in patients with autism who also have a condition called mitochondrial disease or mitochondrial dysfunction. He says, our clinical experience at Kennedy Krieger Institute over the last 15 years has shown that a deficiency of mitochondrial complex one is a common cause of regressive autism. While permanent developmental losses can be substantial, especially in the few individuals who suffer more than one episode of regression, recovery can be almost complete in some children when treatment is started early after the first episode of regression, and a partial response to metabolic therapy remains possible indefinitely. The key in my view is to determine which children could potentially benefit from this type of metabolic therapy and then to do whatever is needed to get them the nutritional supplements that can help with their recovery. Several years ago, one of my patients, an eight-year-old boy with mitochondrial dysfunction and autism, was having a very difficult time taking the dozens of different pills and liquids that were part of his mitochondrial cocktail. He was taking carnitine, coenzyme Q10, vitamin C, vitamin E, and several B vitamins. His mother was frustrated and she asked if I could help her find a solution. At the time, I didn't think there was anything I could do, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. So together, we formed the company MitoMedical with the goal of developing mitochondrial supplements based on what we considered to be best practices at leading universities, and to put these into a form that all individuals could take easily, even those with high sensitivity to taste and texture. What I'd like to take you through are some of the basics of mitochondrial metabolism. What are mitochondria and what do they do? then show you some of the latest research linking mitochondrial dysfunction to autism. And finally, look at what leading university medical centers use to manage mitochondrial dysfunction in children with autism. Metabolism is a general term that's used a lot, but it has a very specific meaning. It's the process where the body takes in nutrients and converts them to energy. In children with a metabolic disorder, there is a disturbance in the body's ability to utilize nutrients and convert them into energy stores. The parts of the cell that are primarily responsible for creating energy, in the form of ATP, are the mitochondria. A single cell can have hundreds or thousands of mitochondria, and the density of mitochondria varies from tissue to tissue in the body, depending on its energy requirement. For example, neurons and muscle cells have high energy demands, and therefore have a high density of mitochondria. When mitochondria don't function well, these tend to be the parts of the body that show signs of poor function. When mitochondria don't function well, many different types of symptoms can appear. Some common symptoms are developmental delay or regression, language impairment, social impairment, intellectual disability, neuropsychiatric symptoms such as ADHD, anxiety, OCD, and depression, seizures, headache, hearing impairment, weakness, exercise intolerance, small stature, gastrointestinal symptoms, and others. All of these symptoms are common in children uh, who have mitochondrial dysfunction and are common in children with autism. What is the latest research on mitochondrial dysfunction in autism spectrum disorders? Well, the research has grown in recent years and there are now many research studies linking mitochondrial dysfunction to autism. In this groundbreaking study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, researchers at the University of California, Davis, 
found that the majority of children with autism between the ages of 2 and 5 in their study had signs of mitochondrial dysfunction on blood tests. This study in the Journal of Neurochemistry found biochemical evidence of mitochondrial dysfunction directly in postmortem brain tissue of children with autism. And this study published by researchers at Columbia University found evidence of mitochondrial dysfunction in postmortem brain tissue of both adults and children with autism. Here are several other research publications that have come out in the past 10 years, all discussing the relationship between mitochondrial dysfunction and autism. And in this meta-analysis, researchers compiled the results of 18 different studies and found that 78% of those with autism had blood tests indicating mitochondrial dysfunction. This is an excellent review paper published in 2011. The researchers explain how mitochondrial dysfunction can connect the diverse medical symptoms associated with autism, including symptoms in many different organs like the brain, muscle, and gastrointestinal tract. All of these research articles can be found um, on our website, mitomedical.com, as well as uh, on www.pubmed.org. This book, The Autism Revolution, was published by Dr. Martha Herbert, who is a pediatric neurologist and a professor at Harvard Medical School. It's been instrumental in bringing attention to mitochondrial dysfunction and other medical aspects of autism that can be treated. She explains that problems with the mitochondria create problems for the whole body, in particular the brain, which uses huge amounts of energy. She also explains how many different types of triggers can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction including gene mutations, shortages of key vitamins and minerals in the diet, certain chemicals, heavy metals and drugs, certain bacteria and viruses, and stress. Mitochondrial dysfunction, therefore, is a potential explanation for how different types of environmental insults might lead to the symptoms of autism. This clinical trial, published in 2011, found that children with autism who were treated with L-carnitine, a compound that's important in mitochondrial function, had improvement in the symptoms of autism, as well as improvement in muscle strength and intelligence. There hasn't yet been a clinical trial of a full mitochondrial cocktail, but this is something that I believe needs to be done. And I think it's possible, though it remains to be seen, I do think it's possible that the improvement would be even more dramatic when other vitamins and supplements are given in addition to L-carnitine. Finally, what are physicians at leading university medical centers using to manage mitochondrial dysfunction in children with autism. The Kennedy Krieger Institute at Johns Hopkins University is one of the leading centers for the treatment of autism, and they've been using vitamins and supplements in children with autism for over 15 years. They've treated hundreds of children with autism and mitochondrial disease using a mitochondrial cocktail, and patients come from all over the country to get the specialized evaluation and treatment that they offer. In order to help other physicians provide the same care to their patients, the group at Johns Hopkins has written this practice parameter to guide physicians in how to treat patients at their own clinics. This full article is available at mitomedical.com. This is the treatment that they've developed. It's a mitochondrial cocktail that includes these ingredients. L-carnitine, coenzyme Q10, and vitamin B5 work to improve the function of the mitochondrial respiratory chain which is the portion of the mitochondria that generates ATP. Vitamin C, vitamin E, and also coenzyme Q10 function as antioxidants. Antioxidants are molecules that help to protect cells and components of cells from damage that can occur through a chemical reaction called oxidation. These ingredients are all dosed by weight, so the more a child weighs, the higher the dose that is needed of each of these. One of the biggest challenges is to get a child to take so many different supplements in large amounts. The current options are either to go through a compounding pharmacy or to buy the individual components over the counter. One of the difficulties with going through a compounding pharmacy is that they aren't regulated. And so you need to be very certain about the quality of the particular pharmacy that you're using. There have been recent cases of contamination of products created by compounding pharmacies. In addition, there's no verification of the dose or the source of the ingredients. And the compounded cocktail is not shelf-stable. It requires refrigeration. And even in the refrigerator, the effective dose begins to degrade over time. 
The compounded cocktail has a taste and appearance that children often won't tolerate. The problem with traditional over-the-counter supplements is that the quality of the manufacturer and ingredients is often questionable. It's hard to find products in the precise dosage for children. The stability is usually untested. And the high pill burden is difficult for children to take and difficult for parents to dose correctly. In my experience, these obstacles have made the use of mitochondrial cocktails much more limited than they should be. And children who could benefit from them simply aren't able to comply with the burden of pills and liquids and the poor taste and appearance um, of these different cocktail options. So Mitospectra is a new mitochondrial cocktail that we created based on the formulation developed at Johns Hopkins. Through a unique delivery system, we've been able to concentrate the five key ingredients, L-carnitine, coenzyme Q10, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin B5, into a mild tasting powder that can easily be masked in soft foods and liquids. It's shelf stable without refrigeration, and it's manufactured in the U.S. under NSF certified GMP standards as set by the FDA, which is the highest quality standard for dietary supplements. The purpose of Metaspectra is to achieve better compliance, and with better compliance comes better efficacy. We're often asked what changes you can expect to see after starting a mitochondrial cocktail. The effect of many of the components can be seen within a few days, but the full effect isn't seen for several months, so it should be taken for at least three months before assessing its efficacy. This is standard for most supplements and also for many medications, that the maximum effect isn't seen immediately, but rather over several months. Common effects after several months have been reported as increased energy, attention, social interaction, language, muscle tone, and coordination. Side effects are rare and much less common than for medications, but they might include hyperactivity or difficulty sleeping. These can be addressed by increasing the dose more gradually and by taking the evening dose earlier in the day. Extra caution needs to be taken in children with a history of seizures or a predisposition to seizures because L-carnitine may transiently increase the risk of seizures. Other side effects are possible depending on the individual patient, and these should be discussed with the personal doctor. Like other mitochondrial cocktails, Mitospectra is dosed by weight. So, for example, a child weighing 25 pounds would take one packet of powder per day. One packet has about one teaspoon of powder, but a child weighing 90 pounds would take four packets per day. The daily dosage should be divided into two or three doses and taken with food during the course of the day. There are several questions that were often asked by parents and physicians, so the next two slides will address these questions. First, are diagnostic tests for mitochondrial dysfunction needed before starting a mitochondrial cocktail? Academic medical centers have a range of different diagnostic protocols. These often involve numerous repeated blood draws and other invasive procedures. These complicated testing protocols often aren't feasible in community clinics and laboratories. Even when a laboratory has the capability to do this kind of testing, it's just often difficult for um, families to be able to, to carry through with it. Many of the tests, such as blood lactate and pyruvate, have low sensitivity and have to be done under specific physiological conditions, such as during fasting or during illness, which makes the testing even more difficult to carry through. Because of these challenges, physicians are increasingly choosing to give an empirical trial of therapy over three to six months while they monitor for objective signs of improvement, such as changes in muscle tone, motor control, coordination, and cognitive and behavioral symptoms. An especially useful type of objective feedback is from other professionals, such as speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, or teachers who don't know that the child is on a mitochondrial cocktail and therefore won't be biased in their feedback. In the past, an empirical trial was difficult to do because compliance with pills and liquids was poor. Mitospectra makes an empirical trial easier, which means that more clinicians now have the capability to emulate what's done at academic centers and to offer patients something that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. Other mitochondrial cocktails are used by different clinics, and they sometimes include creatine, a range of B vitamins, alpha lipoic acid, and other ingredients. Any of these can be added to Mitospectra. The purpose of Mitospectra is to serve as a backbone, 
one that has the essential components of a mitochondrial cocktail, so that it dramatically simplifies the regimen that a patient has to take. Mitospectra does not require a doctor's prescription. All of the ingredients are appro approved by the FDA for use without a prescription. We're often asked whether there are particular symptoms that make it more likely that a patient has mitochondrial dysfunction. Some of the symptoms that are considered classic for mitochondrial dysfunction that make physicians think that mitochondrial dysfunction is more likely are developmental regression, which means a loss of developmental skills, especially in the setting of illness or other stress, such as following a vaccine or after a surgical procedure, symptoms in more than one organ system, for example, the brain as well as the gastrointestinal tract, family members who have symptoms that suggest mitochondrial dysfunction, such as diabetes, cardiomyopathy, liver failure, and learning disabilities. For more information on mitochondrial function and mitospectra, go to our website, mitomedical.com, or give us a call. We have a medical advisory team that provides support to families and professionals, so please don't hesitate to contact us if we can be of any assistance.